Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fun, and today I am sharing a card created with the new December release. This is the Valentine's release, How You Bean Conversation Heart Add-on, which coordinates back to the How You Bean stamp set that was released a while back. And there were some add-ons for Halloween, and now we have add-ons for Valentine's Day. I'm also going to be using new Lacy Borders dies. There are three different dies in the Lacy Borders. I'm going to be using the kind of medium-sized scallop border and the new Your Sweet line border die as part of the greeting. I pre-die cut the layered panels that I am creating using the Lacy Borders die. I die cut several of these and I'm gonna stack them one on top of another. On the layer that's going in the front, this is the Peacock cardstock, I am stamping greetings from the Conversation Heart add-on. The Happy Valentine's Day, I'm breaking it down into two sections to fit the design of my card better. So masking off part of the greeting, inking it up, removing the mask and then stamping the greeting right there to the left kind of of the center. It's going to read happy Valentine's Day to my sweetheart goes underneath that. I love the different size of font or that happy Valentine's Day rather is kind of all caps and then to my sweetheart is all lowercase letters. I like the difference of that. I think it goes together well. Go ahead and put the Happy Valentine's Day back up there now. I've cleaned it off and let it air dry while I stamped the rest of that. And you can see a little bit of water residue. It's, it wasn't quite all the way dry. Got on my cardstock and I'm just gonna need to be careful with that portion. Kind of, that was just water, not Versamark. Otherwise it wouldn't have let me kind of dab that up. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on the Lawn Fawn White Embossing Powder and heat emboss my greeting. I love white embossed greetings on dark cardstock because I think they show up so great. And I made a huge embossing powder mess. If you ever make an embossing powder mess like this, you know it's so hard to clean up. Swiffer dry cloths actually kind of cling that embossing powder to it and make it super easy to clean up those kind of messes. So I got as much as I could back into my container and then the rest I used a Swiffer dry cloth to kind of clean that all up. Also, if you ever have little embossing flakes around your greeting, not where they're supposed to go, a small tipped paintbrush can easily flick away some of that embossing powder and clean up that greeting. Now, before I start stacking anything together or stamp my images, I want to flick some paint all over this layer of the card. I have a little picket fence distress paint here that I'm watering down with a little bit of water. And then picking it up with a fairly small tipped paintbrush and just tapping that paintbrush and flicking the paint all over this panel. I want to do this step first to give my panel time to air dry. That paint's still pretty wet, so I'm gonna set that completely away to the side and start stamping now and coloring in my little jar from the How You Bean stamp set and the Conversation Hearts from the Conversation Heart add-on. Starting with the jar and the jar lid, I'm gonna stamp both of those using Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. Grab the Conversation Hearts and stamp those inside the jar. If you want that to be a separate piece, maybe, I think it would be cute to stamp on white cardstock and color these in, die cut them with the Coordinating Conversation Heart add-on, and instead of stamping the jar on white cardstock, I'd love to see it in vellum as well. So stamp and maybe emboss the jar with white and layer it over the die cut Conversation Hearts piece. I stamped the individual heart from the Conversation Heart add-on multiple times to the side so I could scatter some hearts around kind of the base of the jar. Now I'm going to start coloring in my images. I've sped up the video quite a bit to save a little bit of time here. The pink hearts are our 81 and 83. Green are G000, G00, and G02. I think I kind of started cutting out the G00 because it 
I didn't really need it for these images. Yellow is Y11 and Y08. Purple is B60 and 63. These are blue tone markers, but they're very, very violet. It's one of my favorite kind of purple, quote unquote, combinations. Orange is YR00 and YR02. And I don't want any two of the same color to be right next to each other, so I just worked to kind of make sure that that didn't, excuse me, that didn't happen anywhere in the jar. And I'll just finish coloring these in, and then I want to color the hearts off to the side with these same combinations. I tried to pick color combinations a little bit on the lighter end of the spectrum, more like the traditional conversation hearts. Keeping that darker color where maybe some of the natural shadows fall in the design. There is quite a bit of colorless blender in a lot of the lighter colors, so you want to make sure I'll color in these last couple of hearts, individual hearts over here, and then we're going to color in the jar with a couple of shades of blue just to give the jar a little bit of tint to it and not be so stark white. I'm using B000 and B01 and kind of flicking in the, the color from the side, even slightly overlapping some of the conversation hearts. You don't necessarily want to avoid them. It gives it a more realistic look. I went in with my darker color first and then blended out with the lighter color and there's not even any color added towards the center of the jar. I colored the top of the jar, but I'm actually going to put the lid on top so I really wouldn't have had to. I kind of was thinking I'd leave the lid over to the side like I do a lot of times and I didn't. So you could definitely not color that if you were gonna do something similar. Instead of doing a regular metal looking jar, I did a more painted looking top of the jar and colored it in with some red markers, which is really gonna pull in and coordinate with the red of the die cut greeting border and the red of the stacked layers that are gonna go back behind on the card base. Next, before I die cut anything, because I definitely think it's gonna be easier to add the little conversation heart greetings before I die cut all these small pieces, I'm gonna leave them on my piece of paper, take the small greetings from the conversation hearts add-on, and doing a tone-on-tone -tone look, stamp the little sentiments on each of the conversation hearts. Something to keep in mind, some of the phrases really didn't show up as the ink dried. You can see them really great right here, but I think if I did this again, I would use a shade darker. The Peach Fuzz is a newer Lawn Fawn um, dye ink, and as it dried and absorbed into the paper, you really can't see it very good, which I was a little disappointed with that. So use a little bit darker color. You could also just put black, use black ink on top of these if you really want to be able to see the little greetings. For the purple, I used fresh lavender ink. That one actually was still very visible, even after adding some Nouveau Crystal Glaze over the jar, after the ink dried, everything. That one really was still very visible. For the, let's see which ones I'm doing next. I think that the yellow, the sunflower, still showed up pretty good, but ballet slippers and minty fresh also ended up being way too light. So when you first apply them, like dye inks are, they're very dark, but as they absorb into the paper, they're going to lighten a little bit, and I would just use a shade darker for the rest of these colors. So here's the sunflower ones I'm using. There are tons of different greetings. You can really stamp something different on, on almost all of these. So cute, I love that you can customize them. If you don't wanna use greetings, go back to your How You Bean stamp set and you could add funny little faces to all these hearts as well, which I think would be really fun too. The greetings are super small and fit on all of these hearts perfectly. 
This is the Ballet Slippers ink, which is really a beautiful light pink. As far as light pink dye inks go, I think it's hard to find a really good light pink ink that is true pink that doesn't kind of have that peachy undertone to it. And Ballet Slippers is a fantastic pink. It's probably my favorite light pink dye ink color out of all of the brands. It just was a little too light here. I probably should have gone for Plastic Flamingo. This is the Minty Fresh, which is a beautiful minty color, but if I had to do it over, I probably would have done Peacock or something, so it showed up a little bit better. Any of the hearts that have the same color of ink, I am going ahead and putting all of those down at once and inking them all up at once, and I can do that because I'm using a stamp positioner tool. This is the stamp press from, or, the uh, yes from Tim Holtz you could also use a misty or something like that it just makes it super easy to stamp these images now that I have everything stamped and colored I'm going to go ahead and take the coordinating dies the conversation heart die set has the individual heart and then the group of hearts so if you wanted to layer the conversation hearts back behind something or use them on your on their own, you could go ahead and use that coordinating die. I'm taping them in place here with a little bit of post-it tape so that I can go ahead and run as many of the images through my die cutting machine with one pass of the machine. So we've got the lid, the jar, and a heart. I'm using the Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine. I can't recommend it enough. I have switched over to this within the last week or so and it is amazing. I was having a lot of trouble with my old die cutting machine, having to roll things back and forth several times, not getting an even cut. It just took forever and it was really frustrating. This machine is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. I'll die cut those remaining two hearts and then it will be time to put the whole card together, which I'm going to speed this up because it's simply attaching and gluing and adhering all these little pieces to the card design. All of my background little layering pieces are die cut from Lawn Fawn cardstock. This is the Ballet Slippers cardstock. We'll layer the chili pepper piece right on top of this, slightly overlapping the scallops. I think it gives it a really fun look. This is the raspberry cardstock and finally peacock. We'll glue the jar in place. I like to tip it kind of at an angle, put the lid in place, and then tuck those conversation hearts over to the side. I'm using my greeting as kind of a guide to know where I want to place those two other little individual hearts. Before I add the Your Sweet greeting, I want to add a whole layer of Nouveau Crystal Glaze, which is very much like glossy accents. It's gonna just leave a nice clear glaze over top the glass jar. This helps give the glass jar the illusion of being glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a whole layer of Crystal Glaze all over this, let it sit and dry completely for a couple of hours, and then I will come back and glue the Your Sweet greeting right there along the bottom edge. It's almost gonna serve as a grounding point for the conversation hearts and jars, like they're sitting on top of that line. That's what I love about the um, line border greetings. There's actually two new ones with this Valentine's release. One says love ya and then the Your Sweet border I'm using here today. Thanks for joining me today for this Valentine's themed card featuring new Lawn Fawn Stamps and Dies from the December 2017 release. This is the Valentine's release from Lawn Fawn. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn Stamps and Dies that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.